Hello everybody, my name is Dustin and today I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to do IK rigging. I have a completed model of a fox up and there's something uh, unique about foxes on how they're rigged so I figured I would show this off. If you see the right or the front leg here, which is the right leg as well, I can grab the IK rig and it'll pull the leg as wanted and it'll give you this one bend. But the back leg is unique as they have three joints. So instead I created this thing here that you can grab, which allows you then to do the same thing. There's many different ways you can achieve the same result. Uh, this is the way I prefer to do it. It might look confusing with all these dotted lines everywhere. You can turn the relation lines off, but I like to see them. Um, so yeah, this is what the end result will be. And let's get started. Okay, so I now have the same fox with an incompleted rig. Normally you would do one side of the model and then duplicate it and put it to the other side. So that's how I've set it up for you guys so I can show you to do that as well. For the front arm here, this is similar to a human hand, and what you're going to want to do is go to where you have the elbow joint, and just hit extrude. I tend to go in the opposite direction that the elbow is facing, and just pull it in. Name this, uh, IK, dot arm, dot R. You want to put dot R's at the end, because when you duplicate it, there's a thing that Blender has that allows you just to flip the names automatically, and it just knows between right and left there. Now, you want to turn to form off. What that would do if you had it on is it actually deform the mesh. You don't want that. These bones are purely to pull the other bones that are deforming the mesh themselves. We're also going to take off connected. And you're going to change this to whatever you set your floor bone to be. So this one right here, I called it basing. And we're going to make it uh, connected to the basing. That way if you pull this, oh, I'm not in pose mode. Let's go to pose mode. If you pull it, which is this one thing, it'll pull all the bones. As you can see, those don't have any bones, so they're not being pulled. Yeah. We go back in edit mode, or I'll go back in edit mode, I should say. Uh, Rehide this, and now we have this one bone. Next thing you want to do, shift D to duplicate, and I actually pull it down to here. Most people put it way up here, but for a four-legged animal like this, I always put it closer to the floors. I'll explain why soon. And then rotate it 90 or wherever to go upward. Change this to pull.arm.l. Now you have all the bones you need to create your first IK break, I guess you could say. Now, go to the elbow. Well, I guess it's more like the arm joint. And then go into pose mode. This is where you do your constraints. If you have something going on like this where they've been pulled and you don't want them to be pulled, just do Alt R and then Alt G. It clears the rotation and any translations or trans transformations. Any movements. Now, go back onto this bone and go into constraints. Here, you'll hit inverse kinematic. Your target is obviously the armature that you have. Uh, this is actually armature 0.002 for me. I have a bunch in here. Uh, the bone is the IK that you just made. And then you'll once again, sometimes you might notice your thing goes crazy. Don't worry. That's completely fine because it's not fully set up. Next, you want to get the pull target, which is also in whatever your armature is called. And then pull arm dot L. Now, as you see, this just went crazy. That's fine. The reason being is right here, the chain length. It's pulling every single bone in the chain, which is not what we want. We want to pull two bones, the bone itself and this bone here. You get a relation line that shows you what's going to happen. So now if you go back into whichever view you prefer, you can pull it and as you can see it's doing exactly what you want. But when you go over here, why is it flipping? Reason being, the pull target, the purpose of this is to tell the elbow which way to bend. So it's pulling the direction, right? But if you pass it, the bend is now going to have to flip to be on this side. So. An easy way to get around this, control A and then control R and control G. An easy way to get around this, go to the pull target in edit mode and change its parent to actually be the arm.ik. Now I named this pull target.l, which this should have been pull target.r. I just noticed that because it's all the right side. If you go back into edit mode, or sorry, pose mode, you'll now notice that when you pull this it works exactly how you want and that's all you need to do 
pull this around, you can play with it. Cool. But now you're wondering, uh, why does this move on a separate bone? You want this to move as well. You might not have been wondering that, but that's something I always wondered. And the solution's also simple to that. All you want to do is go here, back in edit mode, turn off connected, and then make this also to the IK. Now, in pose mode, you're able to rotate this, and it'll rotate the foot, and you can grab it around. Look at that. Super simple, nice and easy. The problem with this method of attaching this bone to the IK is if you were to pull anything else that isn't um, the base, like any of these bones, you will see what happens. The foot stays attached to the ground. Normally this isn't what you would want. Instead you would want to change it so that this is still attached here and then you give it a copy rotation or where is it? copy rotation of the IK. But personally I prefer this method because I prefer the stretch on the foot. Uh, it allows you to create more cartoon styled animations, but typically you don't want to do this. Okay, so you're now ready to do the back leg. Now that you know how to do the front, the back is pretty easy. It's basically two IK constraints, one for these two bones, and then one for these two bones, and then an extra bone that will just pull the two IKs. I'll explain why we add the extra bone after once we get there. So, in edit mode, you want to do the same thing as before, extrude and extrude. I don't think the size that one. Uh, we'll rename this middle.ik.r, I'll rename this foot.ik.r, uh, duplicate, rotate 90, pull it over here, we'll call this foot.pull.r, duplicate, rotate negative 90 because the direction is facing, we'll call this middle.pull.r. Uh, we need to take the parent off all of these and the deform, uh, take connected off, take the deform off, take the parent off. Connected, deform, parent. Okay, so these should all now be four things with no parents and no deforms. Now, as we mentioned, or as we learned earlier, we're going to want to actually attach these to here, which is normal, or which is the way I like to do it. So the parent is applied there, and the parent is applied there. Normally, these would be attached to the base, but since we're going to have an extra bone controlling those, we'll leave this to have no parent for the time being. And since we know that I like to attach this bone to this bone, we'll give it the parent as well. Foot.ik.r. Good. Okay. Now we have to go into pose mode and actually create the IK constraints. So inverse kinematics, armature 002. Uh, we call this one. We called this one foot.ik.r. Armature 002, uh, pole IK, or sorry, foot pole R. Then we need to give it a chain length of 2, and everything looks good. Next, we go up here, inverse kinematics, armature 002, uh, middle IK.R, armature 002, middle pole.R. Give it 2. Now, as you notice, there's a weird bend going on. This is normal. The way to fix it is to fix the pole angle. So if this were, let's say, over here, then it would be working. But if I were then to move this bone separately, the bend would be going sideways and not backwards. Just not what I want. So what you just need to do here is give this a pole angle. You just leave either 90, which didn't work, or negative 90, which did work. And there you have it. So now, if I grab this, it should bend the bottom two, which it does. And if I grab this, it should bend these two. But you're still thinking, why would I even need this bone then? Well, if you only had this going, you would never be able to get this top bone to move with it, and it doesn't save you much time. And if you didn't have this IK, you'd have to rotate this separately. Originally, that's what I would do, just have the one IK and rotate this separately. But I thought of a better way. So let's duplicate this bone in edit mode, rotate it 90, and we'll pull it here. 
We'll set the parent of this one to be basing. Make sure you're changing in the actual bone and not the... Well, not... Yeah, not the whole armature. But set this to be basing, which is what I named my big major bone that's hidden. What we're going to do here is now make these set to this thing here. So we'll control this, we'll, we'll give this a name of foot control. Dot R. Go over here, controller dot R, and controller dot R. Now, when we go back into pose mode, if we grab this, voila, it is now moving the whole leg. You can rotate it. It has a little bit of a kick out, but that's just because of either this bone or this bone. But it's working beautifully. Now this is just a method that I thought of recently, where you can have this bone moving it around. With this idea, this here, this the foot, no longer needs to be attached to this bone, because this is now being controlled by that. So instead, we'll go back into edit mode, and we'll change this parent to be the lower leg again, which is what mine was, dot R. In pose mode, you can now rotate this freely, rotate this, rotating this will only move the the knee bone, which is not necessary. Rotating this will also only move this pole target, which is also not necessary. The reason why this is effective is because you can now take all these bones, move them to the second layer. To find your layers, click the little thing that looks like a person, and then you have your two layers here. So I can look at the bones that I don't need to use that are controlling the leg, or I can look at the controller bones. The foot looks really simple now, right? There's nothing here you don't need to touch. You just change the way it faces, and you can pull it up with this. You can put this as close as you'd like. You can change the shape key. You can do anything now. If you're wondering how to make shape keys, it's really simple. Click the bone you want, in pose mode, go to the bone, and you got custom shape. I named the one pole, so I'll put that one in here. And then if you put it on wireframe, you'll see the outline, which, if you notice when you put a custom shape like this, it needs to be on wireframe. The shape obviously doesn't look appropriate here. You can just size it down. I made the, this is actually making the bone smaller. So I would take this off, you would see the bone is now shrunk. If you want to size it down though, make sure you do it in edit mode because it won't stay that size in pose mode when you reset everything. So I can size it down, pull it over here, size this down, pull it over there. Pose mode, give it the custom shape, pull, and set that to wireframe. So you can do that for everything. Make your own custom shapes, move them to a separate layer, and you're good to go. Now, as I promised, I was going to show you how to make the bones exact copies. A lot of people just gra grab them and then drag, and that doesn't work all the time because then when you do, let's say, automatic weights, they won't apply exactly the same on both sides. So to do that, first make sure you have everything, all your bones visible and selected. Then press period. So now, when you have your cursor, it'll go to wherever, uh, or no matter what your selection is, it'll be wherever your cursor is. Click your main object that you want in edit mode, which needs to be your center object. Shift S, cursor to selected. Now your cursor, no matter what you have clicked on, could be this, could be all these, will stay perfectly in the center. So in top view, the best thing to do, use the B tool, Grab the bones you want to grab, shift D, size, X, negative 1. Now it's perfectly flipped it right along the middle, so that if you were to attach it, it would attach perfectly. If you're attaching the mesh, I mean. Uh, but yeah, you can now move these also to do some cleanup to that layer. Move those to that layer. And your mesh is starting to look cleaner. You can use those custom shapes as I mentioned. And that's how you do IK constraints on a two leg or a two joint leg and a three joint leg. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I had a lot of fun making it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. If you want any other tutorials done on like rigging in general, let me know. I might do a whole series from start to finish. Uh, I do plan on doing uh, tutorials on Thursday for modeling, uh, so stay tuned for those. I pull, post videos up every day on building things as well, so stay tuned for those as well. I'm making a video game, so your comments and your input. Greatly appreciated. I have a Facebook now and Twitter. Follow me anywhere you want. 
Uh, take care, everybody.